Hey, hello dear friends. Let's do question number five. I will recopy this question so that we can chat about our strategy. Y equal to six over three x squared minus one to the power of four. And we are looking for its first derivative. So first we can see this is 6 divided, it's a fraction. So it's a division. Fraction is a form of division, right? So we will use a quotient rule. The quotient rule is low d high minus high d low over low squared. So now we take as take a look at the at the high, at the at the two parts. On the numerator is 6, is a constant number. So we can take the, 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 we can establish a equal to 6. So the derivative of a is 0. That is easy. And b is the complete lower part. B is the complete denominator, 3x squared minus 1 to the power of 4. Now we take the derivative of the denominator of this complete thing. Now we find it's the workhorse is actually not so simple. And for this, we need to use, for the B part, we need to use chain rule. Right? So b prime equal to, so take this complete as an object. So 4 to the 4 times 3x squared minus 1 to the power of 4 minus 1, which is 3. And then times the inside 6x squared minus 1 this, what is its derivative? 3 times, 2 times 3 is 6. 2 times 3 is 6. x to the power of 2 minus 1, which is x. And 1 is a constant, no matter positive or negative, it's 0. So that is it. Now we will need to use the quotient rule, so y prime equal to low d high 3x squared minus 1 to the power of 4, low d high, uh, low d high, oh, is 0, minus high 6 d low times, times, uh, 4, oh, oh, this is not good, times 3x squared minus 1 cube times 6x over the bottom squared, the denominator b uh, low squared, 3x square minus 1 to the power of 4 times 2 is 8. So now we can see this is power of 4, power of 3. We can take, no, no, this one is totally out of the business because it's times 0, right? So, and this is t power of 3, power of 8. So 3x squared minus 1 to the power of 5, right? And uh, this one is 4, 24, I think it's 144, 24 times uh, 6, yes. 144x and it's negative and that is it. This is the derivative of this one. Now I will take it out. I am not completely comfortable 
Rose bead. I am actually right. This makes me happy. Question number six. It seems a little bit interesting again. Y equal x square minus one to the power of five minus one to the power of five. So first we take this complete as one function and then we take these. So we need to use a chain rule, right? So, y prime equal to, we take the complete of these, so 5 times x squared minus 1 to the power of 5 minus 1 to the power of 5 minus 1, which is 4, then time the inside. Inside is 5 to the power of this is zero inside right we see this is inside and inside we can use the the difference rule and the difference rule here is a constant we can just ignore it and only x minus two x square minus two to the power of five which is ten four times four no, 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 sorry. 5 to the power times x squared minus 1 to the power of 5 minus 1 is 4. Now we need to do the inside. This one inside is x squared minus 1. So times 2x. Ooh, that is a little, that is a handful. Five, 20, 10, 50, 50x times x squared minus 1 to the power of 4 and x squared minus 1 to the power of 5 minus 1 to the power of 4. And this is as good as I can do, and that is it. So remember, if this is complicated, do one at a time. So first do the complete, and then you do this part to the power of 4. Oh, that still needs to be done. And then at the end, we come to x by itself. It's like um, peeling off the clothes, the first layer of big overcoat, and then the, the heavy jacket, and then the sweater, and until you come to the core of business. Okay, hello dear friends. Here the teacher asks us to find the limit x approach 0, x square over sine x. That is easy. x over sine x is all 0. Put 0 in is 0. And sine 0 is 0. Uh oh, we know one thing that the denominator can never, ever, ever, never be a zero. If it is zero, then we need to figure out a way to avoid it becoming zero. So what we can do is we can copy the same problem and we can write as limit x times limit x over sine x. x over sine x, when x approach to 0, this is 1. It's given. 
We know it. It's already in the textbook. I do not know how to prove it. And maybe Leibniz knows how to prove it. Anyway, you just know this is 1. 1 times and x approach to 0. And this becomes simple, e easy because there is no den denominator becomes 0. So this is 0. So the final result is 0 times 1 is 0. And that is it. Okay, now let's take a look at, uh, I will give it a number, 678, question number 8, give it a number, limit, limit, x approach to 0, x square plus sine, square of x over 4x square, Oh, that is complicated. So we will need to rewrite it. Equal to, equal to limit x approach to 0 for x square over x square plus 4x square over, uh, uh, no x square over 4x square sine square of x over 4 uh, 4x square so we can just I didn't change anything 4x 4x and just write it separately now we can do and do the calculation do the computation separately so this one will become 1 over 4 times um, x square over x square, right? Plus limit x approach to 0 sine times sine square x over x square, right? I didn't change anything. So it equals to limit x over 0, limit 1 over 4. This is a constant, times limit of x square over x square, it cross cancel out, so it becomes 1 plus limit 1 over 4 x approach to 0, and this is a constant, times limit sine square over square x, right? x approach to 0. So the first one is a constant, is 1 over 4, and this one is 1, cross cancel limit of 1, times 1 is the same, plus this one is a constant, 1 over 4, times sine over x is 1. The limit of sine x over x is 1 and completely squared. So 1 squared. So equal to 1 over 4 plus 1 over 4. And the final result is a half. That is it. Question number nine. Let's try this. Limit x approach to zero. Three x plus one minus cosine square x over sine x. So what do we do? It equal to limit x approach to zero 
and we can separate, write it, three times x over sine x, right? Plus one minus cosine square x sine x, right? Equal to and this, we know this is 1, limit 3 times 1, so it's a 3, the first one, plus 1 minus cosine square x is, is sine square x over sine x. Oh, that is easy. Equal to 3 plus limit x approach to zero sine x, right? So when x is zero, this is zero equal to three. And that is it. Question number 10. This looks complicated, but it may not be. Limit x approach to zero x times sine x over 1 minus cosine x. When x is 0, cosine x is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. So we cannot just plug in the number. What we can do is equal to equal to limit x approach to zero. I will do some work. First, I copy exactly the same thing. Did I change anything? I didn't change. One plus cosine x. On the bottom, I plus. I, I time one plus cosine x. On the top, on the numerator, I need to do exactly the same thing. So what do we get? One plus cosine x times one, one plus of cosine x times one minus cosine x equal to one minus cosine x square. I will write it slowly, okay, x sine x 1 plus cosine x equal to sine square of x x sine x 1 plus cosine x square I use another pen do I have This is not my office, but anyway, so sine x, x over sine x is 1, so we know, so it becomes limit of x approach to 0, 1, 1 times, 1 times, times 1, times limit, x approach to 0, 1 plus cosine x. Now we can see 1 is a constant cosine x when x approach to 0. This is 1, so this we can just one time. I will write down 1 at a time. 1 times 1 plus 1 equal to 2. 1 plus 1 plus 1 equal to 1 times 2 equal to 2. And that is it.